Hello, hello. It's probably Sharon. I'm back today with not only how to copy dye pages, but also how to add some extra interest to those pages using simply stencils. There is no ink involved in this at all. It's totally done with coffee. It's beginner friendly, very easy to do. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab some instant coffee. I just got this at Walmart. Um, I'm sure any instant coffee will work. Just make sure it doesn't have like sugars and stuff in it and then it's just regular coffee, not cappuccino or anything like that. Um, and then I heated up a mug of water in the microwave and I put double what the recommendation is on the package. So I put, it says to put one heaping teaspoon and I put two um, and that is because I want it to be darker. So it's still pretty hot. Um, in my opinion, I don't think that it needs to be super hot in order to work. Um, lukewarm seems to work just fine as well. I mean, of course, when you're first making the coffee, it needs to be hot, but to dye the pages, I don't think it necessarily has to be super hot. Okay, and forgive my towel. This is the towel I always use when I dye paper, so it's... Even though I've washed it here and there, the stains don't come out. So, okay, I'm just using regular computer paper or copy paper. And since the coffee is still hot, I'm going to use a sponge brush because I don't want to touch the hot liquid with my fingers. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, and I wish I had a bigger one so it would go faster, but I'm going to go ahead and just paint the coffee on both sides of the paper trying to make sure that I cover the whole thing and not leaving out any white or leaving any white spaces anywhere. Okay, then I'm just going to flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so it's all right to have some little puddles. That's kind of what we want. I mean, not super soaked, but you know, so there's, you can see that there's liquid sitting on top of there. Okay, now I'm getting my instant coffee grounds. And I'm just going to pinch a little bit out of the container and kind of sprinkle it on. The more you put on, the more little, um, it almost looks like uh, splatters of ink when it dries. Um, so this is kind of a cool effect that you can do with coffee. And I'm just gonna set this aside to dry. All right, I've got me a fresh sheet of paper. This time, I mean, the coffee's still kind of hot, but I'll tell you, the first time I heard someone say, oh, I backed the tag with coffee dyed paper, or coffee stained paper, I didn't know how to do it, so without Googling it or anything, I just thought, well, this is probably how they do it, right? So I just use a paper towel and kind of paint it, which works just as well as the paintbrush if you don't have a paintbrush but what you can also do with a bit of a paper towel is make um, kind of designs on the paper just dab it so I mean depending on how much of the paper you want covered you know you can do it to your liking This really has a cool effect when it's dry too. Without using any ink or stamps, you can make a really cool um, 
design for your junk journal. Let me set this one aside. All right, grab one more piece of paper. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the first one. Just paint the whole page front and back. And again, you're going to want a little bit of um, puddling, I guess you'd say. You, so you want to make sure you, you have a lot on your brush. Um, yeah, just kind of, you can kind of see the look of this and tell how, how damp it is. Okay, so once you have it all covered, I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit. You want the surface that you're putting it on to be as flat as possible. Um, this towel, of course, has little ripples in it, so that might impact the final result. Um, but once you have it freshly painted with coffee, just grab a stencil. Um, this one is about the same size as the paper, but you can really use any stencil. It doesn't have to be this big. It could be bigger if you wanted it to, you know, just smaller ones, of course, that aren't going to take up the whole page, but you could do a small one here, small one here. And then when you fold it up for a journal later on, you would have an image, a smaller image on both sides. Okay, just want to make sure that that is kind of suctioned to the paper. And the important thing here is once you have it on there, don't, uh, move it. You want to leave it there until it's dry. I'm actually going to take just a little bit and paint over where the stencil is. And as I'm dragging this coffee over the top, it's kind of scraping off some of that dye into the little grooves of the stencil. Um, however, you don't have to do that. You can just put the stencil on and leave it. It will still have a cool um, crisp pattern when it's dry. I'm going to grab another one, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use a different stencil. Actually, let me use my paper towel. The reason I have on my gloves isn't so much that I don't want coffee on my hands. is because I was playing with dye this morning, and... My hands are stained, so I thought that would be distracting, so I put on gloves. This actually goes a lot faster with the paper towel. Okay, I'm just going to grab another stencil. I thought this one might be fun for like the center of a journal. It's like a, a big elephant. You could totally use that for the center of a journal so you could get the whole image, be able to see the whole image at once instead of splitting it in half. You just make sure that suction down. I'm just going to put a little bit down here where it looks like there's not as, as much coffee. Anyway, so the hardest part of this whole project is waiting for it to dry. Of course, um, a lot of people, when they coffee dye their uh, paper, they put it in the oven just at a low temperature and then, uh, you know, flip it every few minutes. Um, for me, I just feel like that's too time consuming to sit in front of the oven and flip paper every five minutes. So I prefer to just let it air dry. Um, it usually takes maybe an hour for them to dry completely. 
So if you wanted to do a lot of these um, stencils on your paper, it would probably be a good idea to get like a big area, like a table or something and cover it with plastic and then a towel and just do a bunch of them at once. Then they can stay put and dry on, the, on a large area without you having to move them anywhere. So in my little filming area here, I only have enough space to put two and I don't want to move them because that will change the result of the paper once it's dry. So I will come back once these are dry and we'll take a look. Okay, these are very close to dry, if not dry completely. One thing I wanted to explain is you might be wondering, well, why couldn't I just put the stencil on after, you know, the coffee dyed paper is dry, you know, then put the stencil on and go over it with coffee. Well, let me show you what happens when you do that. So this is a paper that I coffee dyed and then I let it dry. Then I put the stencil over the top and just went over it with the brush. As you can see, the coffee wants to spread. Um, the liquid wants to spread. So the images aren't very crisp. And it also goes underneath the stencil, so it makes marks where there shouldn't be marks. It does still look kind of cool and kind of grungy. So, I mean, I think I would still use this anyway, but I just wanted to show you how the images aren't as crisp this way. Here's another one that I did. Um, and I mean, you can see the pattern a bit, but there's a lot of blotchiness. So that's why it's important to put the stencil on while the paper is still wet. You will get the best images that way. And some that I left overnight to dry were actually the best ones that I've done. If It seems like the longer you let it sit and dry, the better the image will look. So um, let's go ahead and, well actually let's look at the first ones we did. Um, the one where I put the, the coffee powder, the instant coffee powder over the wet uh, coffee stained paper. This is what it looks like when it's dry. It kind of looks like um, ink splatters in a way. So, I mean, here's another look if you want something like that. I personally like it when it's the finer bits, where it's the smaller um, blotches. I seem to like that one better than the bigger blotches. But the image will show up on both sides, which is kind of nice. And then we did this one where I took the paper towel and just kind of dabbed coffee on it. So this is what that looks like when it's dry. So it's kind of a fun um, look as well. This is one I like to use a lot myself. And then let's go ahead and take the stencils off of these. Um, I feel like they are still a slight, yeah, they're slightly damp still, but um, I don't want to wait all night to do the rest of this video, so we'll go ahead and check it out. So you can see how crisp and clear those images are, and this is without ink. This is just coffee. I mean, it's really amazing. It's, it's beautiful. It adds a lot to your journal. Um, I, I think it's fun to pop a couple of these in the journal so they're not all coffee dyed plain paper. You have some pretty images in there and sometimes not on this one but sometimes you can actually see the image on both sides so let's check out the elephant I'm excited about this one I haven't used this elephant stencil until today so let's see it's kind of kind of faint but like I said it's not completely dry um, I do like it I think it turned out really cool I think I might do another one later and leave it to dry overnight to see if I can get a darker image. I'll just quickly show you a few that I did off camera just so you can see the different stencils and how they turned out. Let's see if this one's on both sides. See this one you can kind of see on both sides which is nice. I think this is the same stencil we did together so you can see how this is much darker. And this one was another one that I left longer to dry and it's um, 
more defined, a little darker around the edges of the stencil. And this one is my favorite. This one I think turned out amazing. And this is another one that I left overnight. So it sat for six or seven hours to dry. And for whatever reason, it just, they seem to turn out a lot better. And even the back has the image. So you can do a lot of things with these. You can fold them up and put them in your journal, make a signature out of them, or you can just use a few. You know, you don't, they don't all have to be stenciled, but you can fold them up. You know, it's just nice when you're looking through a journal and you see a pretty image and it's faint enough that you can still write over the top of it with no problem. Something else that I like to do, if my papers are too uh, wavy, I do like to iron them flat. Sometimes they're not, not too bad, so I don't worry about it. But let me just go over that really quick in case you don't know how to do that. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm just putting down a, a hand towel that is folded in half, and then some parchment paper. And then I'm going to put my sheet, and then another piece of parchment paper. And the reason I'm putting parchment paper over the top is basically because I don't want my iron to pick up any of those little granules, coffee dust or whatever, because I do use this iron for clothes sometimes. So yeah, I have it on about medium heat and that's all you do. Just go over it quickly and it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be like brand new, brand new paper, but it does help get some of those wrinkles out and kind of make it a little more flat. Um, sometimes you can do a couple of them at once. Just make sure that your surface um, underneath is protected and you don't want to melt anything. Just, you know, be aware. And that's really all there is to it. And like I said, you don't have to. It's, it's personal preference if you want to iron them out or not. Anyway, I hope you found some good ideas and maybe learn some things that you didn't know. Um, you can use the same technique with just brewed coffee. It doesn't have to be instant coffee. Um, the instant coffee to me, it smells a lot stronger. So you will have a lot stronger smell if you use the instant coffee. That That's my opinion anyway. Um, and the brewed coffee, it, it takes a little bit longer. You have to mix it about triple strength what you normally would to drink kind of the same as the instant coffee i just find the instant coffee is it's faster to make a cup of coffee and also you with the freeze-dried instant coffee you can sprinkle over the top of your paper and make that um splotty splotty effect where um it's not so easy with you know, the other kind of coffee. So please like and subscribe. Thank you for staying until the end. Let me know if you have any comments and I will see you when I create my next video.